On April 29, 2006, the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in West Los Angeles was evacuated. For an hour and a half, over 300 people were in a state of conjoined fear, as what appeared to be a bomb was spotted inside of a newspaper stand in the medical center. Meanwhile, an hour away in Santa Clarita, a similar looking device was found in a newspaper stand on Sand Canyon Road. A red box, six inches long, two inches wide, with multiple protruding wires, was spotted on top of the stack of papers, almost as if it had been tucked away in the stand but came loose. This theory was precisely correct, but the devices seen in both the Veteran Affairs Medical Center and on Sand Canyon Road while they were created in conjunction with one another, were not explosives. In actuality, they were music boxes, programmed to play the iconic Mission Impossible theme upon the door of the newspaper stands being opened. Unfortunately, this was not immediately known information, as 4,500 of the music boxes were placed in paper stands around Los Angeles and Santa Clarita only a day prior. The LAPD arson squad arrived at Sand Canyon Road and conducted a controlled demolition of the stand. Counter terrorists win. Now, in 2006, the Mission Impossible franchise wasn't full of the guaranteed hits that it is today. And in fact, leading up to the release of Mission Impossible 3, things were not looking good. In addition to the large six year gap since the previous movie, which was also not very good, the star and producer of the film, Tom Cruise, was having a career-low public image after declaring his belief in Scientology and jumping on Oprah's couch. Paramount had to do something drastic to spark people's interest in this movie. I mean, they had a potential money-printing franchise on their hands, and they did not want to let it flop. Thus, the music boxes were placed all around the LA area, with Paramount hoping that this dabbling in guerrilla marketing would pay off. Unfortunately, it was Paramount themselves that would have to pay. About $92,000, in fact, in damages to the Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Plus, there was the threat of legal action against them, but that never actually materialized. And as for Mission Impossible 3, well, the film would go on to graciously become the lowest grossing film in the franchise. Ten. Even though this may seem like a pretty big disaster, it still actually isn't the most egregious marketing stunt ever. In anticipation of 2008's Forgetting Sarah Marshall, billboards began popping up in cities all across the country with a blank white background and text that read, You suck, Sarah Marshall. My mom always hated you, Sarah Marshall. There was even one that straight up called Sarah Marshall fat. But no biggie, right? It's a fictional character in a movie that I haven't even seen. Where's the harm? Well, if your name happened to be Sarah Marshall, giant billboards verbally harassing you didn't exactly yield positive real-world results. Suddenly, the Sarah Marshalls of the world began to experience actual harassment stemming from these promotions. The billboards didn't even say they were promoting a film, but they certainly did end up promoting a bit of Sarah slander. Ill-thought-out billboards aren't exclusive to Judd Apatow joints, though. Over in the Netherlands in 2006, a year filled with good marketing ideas as we've learned, Sony had thought of a genius way to promote the release of their upcoming PSP White. PlayStation Portable White is coming, the billboard read. White text, black background, simple, minimalist, all in all pretty good- OH MY GOD! So, uh, yeah, Sony assured onlookers that this was only meant to highlight the contrast within the PSP color spectrum. Even though they were certain that this excused the troubling imagery, they quickly took down the promotions. Still, at least it's not as bad as this Navi ad, cause yeah, this is pretty bad. Sony can still say that it bounced back from this advertising misfire, but the same cannot be said for THQ. For the release of their first person shooter Homefront, THQ made the brilliant decision of releasing 10,000 balloons into the San Francisco skyline for promotion. To tell you the truth, it's really unclear why they thought this would be a good idea. 
Like, obviously they received backlash from environmentalists because of what disastrous effects a pileup of latex would have in the San Francisco Bay. But even ignoring that, the balloons had advertisements for the GameStop pre-order bonus Resistance Multiplayer Pack attached to them. So I guess the plan was once the balloons fell back to the ground, people would find literal garbage on the street and decide to pre-order the game. In the end, THQ had to pay a $7,000 fine for the pollution, which, I mean, you know, kind of a slap on the wrist. But GameStop did have to publicly distance themselves from the company, and THQ would later declare bankruptcy. Now, it's only fair that we end on a positive example. Of course, this means positive from the point of view of the studio, not necessarily the public. Staged police photos, fabricated news stories, and a full urban legend were created at the request of Artisan Entertainment ahead of the release of the 1999 film The Blair Witch Project. All of this artificial media was to convince the public that the stars of the movie were missing, presumed dead, because of filming. It was a bold strategy that would certainly unravel in today's internet culture. But this was 1999, and there was never a marketing attempt like this before, so audiences had no reason to believe that what they were reading was fake. Even IMDB listed the actors as presumed dead. This generated insane amounts of word of mouth, making the film a must-see phenomenon. And with just a $60,000 budget, The Blair Witch Project grossed $248 million during its theatrical run and became a cult classic. Now, the reason that I find this stuff so interesting is, is that I was actually a marketing major in college before I dropped out. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you have an interesting marketing campaign that I missed, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I love responding to what you guys say down there. Like, subscribe, and whatnot, and be sure to watch Mission Impossible 3. It is the coolest movie ever made.